Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Water for Kit Guru. The thinking behind this EK Classic RGB S360 kit is dead straightforward. This box contains this hardware here, which is all you need to liquid cool the CPU in your PC using a 360 radiator. EK does a whole variety of kits ranging from about 280 euros up to about 440 euros, depending on what size of radiator you want, what thickness of radiator, what type of pump, whether it's soft tube, hard tube, and so on and so forth but this kit is right down towards the budget end of the scale because it's classic. Classic is their budget range of hardware, which is similar in terms of performance to the more expensive kit. It's just slightly more basic in terms of aesthetics. So we have here, as I say, a 360 rad. There is a slightly cheaper version, which has a 240 rad. Other than that, we're down at the bottom end of the scale. I've done a quick tot up from EK's store to save any hassle with the conversion factor. If you were to buy all the parts individually at a cost of about 330. So 330 versus 304, you're saving around about 10%, which in the great scheme of things is utterly trivial. This is to make life easier for the novice. It's to guarantee that you've got everything you require uh, to get the box, unpack and install. Here's what you get in the kit. So we've got a user guide which covers the 240-360S models, which is what this is, which is a slender radiator, and you get the uh, performance versions of, which is the same but a thicker radiator. In the box here, we've got the 360 rad, and there are the fittings. CPU block, so it's a Supremacy Classic mounting kit block mountings and there we have the am4 bracket so basically we're good for everything with the exception of lga 775 and pre am4 amd there we have the pump reservoir unit that is an spc pump rather than a ddc even though it looks similar obviously we're powering it off uh, a regular fan header uh, that is the rgb connector this is only rated at 6 watts. The DDC is rated at 18 watts and correspondingly has like three times the flow. This is what, about 30% of a DDC and a D5 is 50% higher than a DDC. So this is a tiddly little pump, but it's supplied in the kit. So we have to take it on trust for the moment that it'll do the job. There we have a mounting bracket for the pump. So that goes on a 120 mil fan, but obviously ideally that's gonna be horizontal. Uh, because if you want to mount that in, say, the front, then the uh, reservoir is going to be horizontal, which does not look ideal. Three uh, Varda 120 fans. These are rated 500 RPM to 2200 RPM, and they in turn are RGB. And by now you might be thinking, that's a lot of RGB. How do I connect all that RGB together? Here we have, now this is funny actually, I've been sent two of these RGB splitters, uh, four-way splitters. Uh, so that, for example, could control the RGB in these three fans, and this could control the RGB in the pump res. Uh, I only expected to get one of these in the kit, but there are two. There we have the soft tube fittings that go with this soft tube. That's a two meter piece. If you buy soft tube from EK, it's typically a three meter length. So that's obviously to keep costs down. Uh, and here we have a pump powering unit. There we have a three way fan splitter, obviously to go with the three Vardas. And there we have a jumper that goes on your power supply so everything can run without the system running. And there we have some EK cryofuel uh, concentrate. It's clear, so you need to mix that with distilled water. That's obviously not coolant in and of itself. Let's take a closer look at a couple of the main components. So there we have the Supremacy Classic block uh, with the RGB connector coming off it. Here I have an old Supremacy block, as obviously an acetal, so it doesn't have the acrylic top to it, but you can see that aesthetically uh, they are the same. Uh, so that is very much a Supremacy. If we look at the current uh, velocity, you can see there are aesthetic differences. However, the classic, it looks entirely acceptable. It's just not quite as swish uh, as the new velocity.
It's a similar story with the Coolstream Classic 360 radiator. Here we have the regular non-classic version. There isn't a lot to tell them apart. Uh, the uh, regular radiator has the EK logo on it and it's also got some printing up here. On the other hand, the Classic's got this sort of profiled side plate on it, which you know, either you want it plain or you don't. I, I think you could actually make a case for either look. Uh, but in terms of form, fit and function, they are basically identical radiators. When it comes to the pump reservoir, so this is the Classic SPC uh, in the kit. Here I have a very old DDC, uh, which has only got a 100mm top on it, and that's got the same corners and uh, angular aesthetic to it. This is very old. The cabling looks absolutely horrendous. Uh, in terms of aesthetics, I'd go for the new one every day of the week, no argument about it. It's only when you reach for this new D5 Revo PWM, uh, which has actually had a bit of effort made in terms of the machining uh, to knock off some of the corners. Nonetheless, aesthetically, the new SPC looks perfectly sound. This will uh, pump far more fluid than the SPC, no argument about it. Probably about five, six times more, should you want to turn it up. Uh, but in terms of the look of the thing, there's actually quite a lot going for this uh, pump res in the kit. It comes as no surprise to me that EK's worked on the packaging. So all the classic kit uses this packaging that has, I think it's a play on the EK logo. Uh, their traditional packaging radiators come in a green box, like so. Reservoirs in a blue box, accessories in a pink box, pumps in a red box. Uh, so families of products come in different types of packaging. In this instance, all the classic comes in this look packaging. My initial fairly obvious observation is that the kit is making sense, provided you're going to use everything that's in it and you don't have a shelf of gear behind so you can't reach for some fans or a power supply jumper or an RGB split or any of those bits and pieces that you're paying for in the kit. You've got 30 odd euros to play with. So if you, for example, have fans you're reusing or a pump res or whatever, you know, as soon as you start using some of this from your existing stock of gear, the kit makes no sense at all. If you've got a fresh build to do, you want to start from scratch and you want to import everything you require, this kit makes a fair amount of sense. But of course, we've got to use it before we can actually come to a firm decision. I'm going to build into this Lian Li O11 dynamic case, which can accommodate three 360mm radiators. So I have a choice of putting the rad in the floor, in the side, or in the roof. My motherboard is this ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus with a Ryzen 5 3600. Graphics card is a Founders Edition RTX 2080. The result is gonna be a decent gaming PC. And of course, we're looking at the liquid cooling side of things to see how well the hardware installs in this case, what it looks like, how well it performs. First job is to install the CPU block on the motherboard. If you're using uh, Intel X299 IE 2011-3, you put these uh, studs into the four female threads, put the block on and then use nuts to hold them down. If you've got uh, Coffee Lake, you use this back plate and then uh, studs go into those, block goes on, nuts go down. With AMD, you have to uh, swap this hold down plate for the specific AM4 hold down plate. We start by removing these four screws and the two plastic brackets. Then we take the block, we remove the please remove sticker. We take the Allen key that is supplied with the uh, kit. And we take out these four screws. The trailing cable is for the lighting in the block. It's hidden under there. And while we're at it, let's just peel off the protective sticker that's over the logo. And now we take the cover off the block. Take the top cover, put the jet plate back in the detents. Line up the hold down plate. It's sitting on detents there. That's nice and straightforward. The cold plate still has the O-ring in place. And we pop that back. We check everything is lined up and it is. And then we put the four screws back in place. With all four screws in uh, slack. And then we knit them up, working crisscross. cross 
like so. Take the supplied thermal compound. So my processor is already installed. Splodge of thermal compound. That's absolutely fine. Offer up the block. Run one of the screws in very slightly. And two. Three. The slots in the brackets mean that you have to just get everything lined up before you start tightening it down, otherwise you'll cause yourself immense problems. Get it lined up first, easy peasy. There we go. And then we connect the RGB, so this is a RGB 12V rather than ARGB. The arrow denotes the 12 volt pin, which is this one here. I've already installed an SSD, that's a Toshiba RC100, and if I take some memory, this is G-Skill Trident Z Royal 3200. And that is a motherboard assembly ready to go in the case. The PC is coming along nicely. One thing I'd like to point out is that the pump mount, uh, it mounts where you'd install a 120 mil fan. The Lian Li, which actually comes without any fans whatsoever. So these three fans come with the kit. It's unusual. It has three uh, fan mounts in the floor, three in the side, three in the roof, none at the front. Most cases will have uh, Fan mount at the rear, fan mounts at the front, probably fan mounts in the roof. The Lian Li is unusual. So in this case, that bracket works absolutely perfectly. In many cases, you want to mount your pump reservoir unit at the front on one of the fan mounts. That bracket is not really very good for that. Uh, I would generally use a bracket like this. So it mounts to the fan mount and then the pump goes on there so it remains vertical. Uh, these are the parts I still have to use. So I've got six of these fittings. So that's two that go in the CPU block, two go in the radiator, two go in the pump res. Here's the tubing that connects it all together. I've then got the uh, coolant concentrate, uh, just as a, a note to uh, people who haven't built uh, liquid cool PCs before. You don't just use uh, straight distilled water in your loop. You need to uh, add clever chemicals basically which will inhibit uh, things like fungal growth and such like because your liquid cooling system generally runs in the 40 50 60 degrees territory 60 is actually quite hot for a liquid cooling loop and the consequence is that nasties can grow in the loop and you do not want that so if you're not using a premix coolant such as this ek cryofuel then you need a concentrate that you can then uh, dilute with uh, distilled water you can see my seasonic snow silent power supply it's white it fits this case absolutely delightfully we're going to use a few of these other accessories that have been supplied by uh, ek so the four-way uh, splitter cable for the rgb i'm going to take the cables from the three RGB fans. I'm going to connect the three RGB headers from those fans into this uh, four-way splitter and I'm going to take the one connection and attach that to the motherboard. I'm going to use the power supply jumper to jump the power uh, so I don't actually have to have the motherboard running. You jump across the 24-pin main connector and that tricks the power supply basically into thinking it's connected to a PC and is then happy to run. Similarly, this SATA power connector here, I can plug that into the PWM connection on the pump and that's all good. And this three-way fan splitter, I can similarly connect to the three PWM connections on the three fans. If you connect the three fans to the splitter, you only have to make the one connection to the motherboard. So EK supplied hardware I'm gonna use is not all strictly necessary, but it makes for an easier job. As I was connecting the cables, the build evolved very slightly. So the top RGB connection on the board is used for the four-way splitter that goes to the CPU block and also to the three fans. The bottom RGB connection is for the pump reservoir RGB. Also, I've removed the M.2 SSD from the exposed slot above the graphics card as the label was upside down in that position and I've moved it to a lower position where it's uh, covered by a heat sink, so it's now completely invisible. Around the back of the case, the fan cables have been tidied. 
This cable is a temporary measure to allow us to power the pump and check that the cooling loop is working correctly. Connecting up the components in the loop is not particularly difficult, especially when you use soft tubing. All of the fittings that you uh, will ever come across in PC cooling have a G quarter thread, uh, so male thread on the fitting, female thread on the component. So these threads, these threads, and those threads are all identical. The order of the loop is pretty much up to you. However, note the uh, pump reservoir unit has an in and an out. The CPU block has an in and an out. The radiator, you can use either fitting as an in or an out. It doesn't matter whether the loop flows from the pump to the CPU block to the radiator back to the reservoir or the other way around. That's entirely a matter of choice. The, uh, the critical point to remember is you always have to feed the pump with coolant. You can't let the pump run dry. Beyond that, look at the ins and the outs. It should all be straightforward. Here's where we run into a potential problem. I need to go out of the pump reservoir and either into the radiator or into the CPU block. I want to go from there to there. However, I'm going out and I've got the side of the case here. So if I put that union there, the tube basically is butting up against the glass. Now I'm going to cheat by putting in this extra part here, which is not included in the kit. It's a straightforward 90 degree, which I can, and it's rotatable. So once I've done it up, I can then point it backwards to go along here. The alternative approach, if you don't want to buy extras such as this 90 degree, is to rotate the pump on its mount 90 degrees so the unions natively point that away. I want this connection to run at the front of the case, so I'm choosing to do this, but be aware this is not included. Also not included while I think about it, this tube cutting tool. This soft tubing is easy to cut, but if you want to get a really clean cut, it helps to use a proper tool rather than say a pair of scissors. You're gonna have to get your coolant into the loop. I prefer to use a squeezy bottle like this because obviously I've done a bit of liquid cooling in my time. I also prefer to wear protective gloves because when all of a sudden done chemicals and skin, best not to mix the two. Distilled water's not a problem, it's the other stuff in the uh, coolant concentrate that I'm concerned about. So protective gloves for choice. Squeezy bottle is not essential. You could use an old milk uh, carton, quite frankly, provided you've got a, a small funnel that's then gonna get the uh, coolant into the reservoir. That's straightforward enough. You also need to mix the distilled water with the coolant concentrate. EK says to mix uh, the entire 100 ml concentrate with 900 ml of distilled water. I'm choosing to do it a quarter at a time. This is a 250 ml bottle, but it should come out the same. Uh, so next step is to fill the loop. I've got the jumper in place across the 24 pin. So now when I switch on the power at the back of the power supply, the pump is gonna start running. Uh, I'm gonna keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't start shooting coolant everywhere. Uh, if you're being cautious, the sensible thing is to put a load of kitchen towel anywhere that is uh, sensitive inside the PC case, which basically is everywhere. However, I'm trusting that I've got this right and I want you to be able to see what goes on. So, here we go. And the pump has emptied the reservoir. Take two. Right, that is the loop filled. Obviously got a load of air in the system, but we've got half a reservoir's worth, so we're all good. And we're not getting any splash back, so we can top this up safely. To make it absolutely crystal clear what's going on here, I'm powering the cooling loop only. The only power is being supplied to the pump, so the coolant is just going around the loop. The PC is not on, and what I'm looking for here is leaks. If there are any leaks, you want to stop them before it becomes a real problem, and also by circulating the coolant, we can get air out of the system. I'll leave the system running for a while just to get most of the air out, and then you can tip the case around, because obviously air goes up, and this loop is going around. So you need to give it a chance for the air to get out of the system. 
but uh, as soon as that's happened, I'll disconnect the jumper block and actually run up the PC uh, properly. That's the PC up and running, looks good, the RGB is connected, the fans are controlled, it's cooling itself properly, happy, happy, happy. And if you think this is absolutely terrific, then all I need to do now is to drip in some either yellow, blue or red dye from this EK Cryofuel pack to bring a little more colour into my world to add to the RGB and we're done. The problem is, what I've done here is to demonstrate the EK Classic kit makes your life slightly easier when it comes to selecting your components and I think I've also demonstrated there's a fair amount of work in constructing a custom loop. The kit makes it easier in the selection part of the process. The actual construction, you still got to do it. Soft tube is straightforward. It's much more work to do hard tubing, but you can see there's work. So what we have here in terms of function is not massively different to installing this AIO, which is a 360 with RGB. And that could be something of a problem because this approach certainly costs more than the AIO. Now, I don't doubt for a moment that EK is gonna say the quality of their components and such like means you've got better longevity and you're more reliability and such like. In the event you do have a problem, you can change a part. Indeed, if you want to change part of the loop, uh, so for example, put a taller reservoir in, you can do that without too much difficulty. It's one component in a system. Nonetheless, you're paying quite a lot of money compared to an AIO to go down this route. But of course, this is now an open loop cooling system rather than a closed loop AIO. And it means it's got one big trick up its sleeve. You can also liquid cool your graphics card. Your CPU benefits from liquid cooling. In fact, uh, Luke would make the argument if you put a decent air cooler on your CPU, you're cooling the area around the CPU, including the VRMs. Liquid cooling your CPU, it looks good. It makes for a clean, neat, tidy build. In terms of function, there's a bit of a question mark over it. The CPU benefits, the area around the CPU, maybe not. Liquid cooling your graphics card, on the other hand, that's all good. The first step when you want to put a block on your graphics card is to make sure you have the correct block for your graphics card. Sounds very obvious, I know, but that's the reason I bought myself Founders Edition graphics cards in the first place, because that's the reference design. If you have uh, a specific design from EVGA, uh, Asus Strix, MSI or whatever, you will often find the graphics block is subtly different. You need to get the precise model. Anywho, here's my block. There's the package, there's the barcode, take a photo of the barcode and download the installation guide from EK's website. This is not an especially difficult job, but of course you need to take care. You don't want to damage the GPU with the graphics block. You need to take care. So it's just take your time, follow the instructions step by step. This back plate's been off before, one of the screws is missing. Four mil socket. As the graphics card comes away from the cooler, we need to look for the block connector there. Happily on this model, just a single block. Nice and straightforward. As I say, this uh, this card has been a part in I didn't say, this card has been a part in the past, which uh, helps. Alcohol. Bare graphics card, and if you've not seen a graphics card minus its uh, air cooler before, you might be shocked at how little there is uh, on show. The cooler is a huge part of the hardware. That's where the technology is and that's where the money goes. Thermal pads are applied to the memory chips and also to the power regulation hardware. Thermal compound on the GPU, you can use quite a lot because if it squidges out, it's not gonna go anywhere that matters. And it's a bare GPU, so you wanna make sure it cools properly. I've got the card on the packaging, which means it's raised in the air, and that helps when I lower the block in place. I can try and line up the screw holes so nothing has to be moved. That's about right. 
fold the assembly together, flip it over, bracket off that side of the box, and there we go. And now we put in a whole load of screws. Every screw gets a plastic washer. And that's the graphics block installed on the graphics card. But the back of the thing looks absolutely horrendous. So we're also going to install a back plate. With the Lian Leo 11 Dynamic, you have the option of a vertical graphics card mounting bracket. So that's what I'm going to use. We're going to show off the water block to full effect. Liquid cooling the graphics card has an enormous impact on temperatures dropping them by 25, 26 degrees under load. And you will note I've only got three fans on that radiator. There are no fans in the floor or in the roof. I could drop temperatures lower very, very easily by increasing number of fans or ramping up fan speed. This PC is quiet, which is just the way I like it. Aesthetically, it also works very nicely. Of course, there's an impact on price. The graphics block is in the order of 110 euros and the back plate's another 30, so we're talking approximately 50% the cost of the classic kit. For our final trick, I'm going to turn the lighting to white, and then I'm going to drip in some blue dye into the coolant. You may not have noticed I've actually removed the front panel from the case, so I can reach inside, even with the side panel installed. And that means that I can add blue as I said in the introduction, the SPC pump is very low powered. It's only six watts. That SATA power adapter that EK supplies with the kit so you can power the pump and get the coolant pumping around the circuit. It definitely makes a difference. You can see how slowly the blue is permeating, but nonetheless, it's getting there and looking rather good. So let me sum up what I think about the EK Classic kit. It's perfectly decent. The thing is, the strength of this kit is, is it helps you to configure your liquid cooling system. Personally, I wouldn't buy one of these kits. The reason is this kit is not actually aimed at me. I'm not the intended customer. I suspect this kit is actually aimed at system integrators who want to be able to uh, sell a kit to customers who configure a PC and then want it liquid cooled as well. Here you go, sir. Bump. There's a box. We'll install it for you. I don't know if they're probably at free of charge, actually and the result will be impressive and the customer will be happy and that's terrific. I'm not the customer, I'm more interested in their new quantum range and the vector range rather than the classic range. That's fine, I know this is not intended for me. If you are configuring your first liquid cool PC, there's no harm whatsoever in going down the classic route, it's cheaper. You'll get everything you need, certainly pretty much, and you'll end up with a result and that's important. However, it's worth mentioning the EK configurator on the website is very good. Go along there, punch in your case, your motherboard, your graphics card, tell them what you want to do with your system. Do you want to go for performance or for quiet, however you want to do it? It will suggest parts. Uh, do you want soft line, hard line, PWM pump, whatever? It will give you a list of parts, which is pretty much the same as buying a kit. You will probably be surprised how much it costs. Uh, custom loop cooling is an expensive game. If you go through EK's configurator and it suggests a spend of say 500 euros, you might then think, hmm, actually this classic kit is going to give me most of the impact, most of the effect, and it's a lot cheaper, in which case, fine, no problem whatsoever. Personally, not for me, I can fully see that for the noob or for the system integrator, this is absolutely excellent. And I have to say the finished result pleases me mightily. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit the bell button, subscribe. We'll alert you to new videos as they become available. I'm Leo Wood of the Kit Guru. This is the EK Classic S360 Custom Loop Kit.